love And how much more Can God above According to His own likeness In His own image everybody good afternoon and happy sabbath to those online um already greeted Lorraine, every, everybody here Morris, earlier this Val. morning yes welcome 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 back to those that have already been with us this morning and uh yeah we've just begun singing great is thy faithfulness this afternoon is a praise and testimony time we're going to be sharing some of the lord's uh, blessings to us uh, together and so we'll continue singing our opening hymn great is thy faithfulness it's hymn number 100 in the new in the new hymnal and so we'll start with we'll continue with the second verse and a tad quicker thanks just a tad quicker than we did the first one 
Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy. is that song all that we need God is able to provide and how does he provide it to us through through Christ Jesus according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus the scripture tells us amen Lorraine has chosen 421 in the old 421 all things bright and beautiful especially the sunshine Sabbath 93 93 and Kerry is joining us from COVID Hotel. Hey, Kerry, welcome. COVID quarantine. The COVID. Rhonda lineup. is joining us. Mum is back. Rhonda. Glad you can join us. Morris, I think we mentioned Morris. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's now a civilized hour over there in South Africa. <clears throat> Bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, he, he made them. the winter 
Over in the Philippines. Hey, Richard. Welcome. Yes. Nice. That's it. Thank you. No more requests? No more song requests? No, nope, not online. Okay. 327. There you go. Oh, 327. In the new. 327 in the new. It's not in the old. I'd rather have Jesus. For those that are following, 327. In the new. In the new, yes. I'd rather have Jesus than lots of things. Everything. Yes. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be with than have riches untold. I'd rather than houses or lands I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be Oh, 
Amen. Thank God for such a wonderful gift that we may have Jesus as our brother, as our Lord, as our Saviour, as our Creator. How wonderful is Jesus as our mediator and so many other things. Yes, so praise be to God. Before I pray, I would just like to read as intro Psalm 9 verse 1 and 2. Psalm number 9 and verse 1 and 2. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Let's pray. Gracious Father, there are so many reasons that we have to praise you. You are such a great and awesome God. And having revealed yourself to us in such a most marvellous way through your Son when he was here on earth, we give you thanks for that. We thank you for the wonders of your creation, all things bright and beautiful, that you made them all perfectly in the beginning. What a wonder it must have been for Adam and Eve to walk around in the garden and behold those things in their perfection. Father, we see so many beautiful things. Um, Reuben shared the rose this morning, not only to look upon, but to, to be able to um, smell the scent, that beautiful perfume that is coming off that, uh, that came off that flower. Just, just awesome. We can't imagine what heaven will be like with all the flowers and all the blooms that never die, just constantly giving off their perfume. A reflection of the perfume, Father, of your glory. For you are a most wonderful and beautiful God. We thank you that we can be here this afternoon in this uh, safe place, a place where we can indeed pour out our hearts in thanks. And uh, Lord, I just pray for all those that are online as well, that they will feel the spirit that we are feeling there. That uh, we know that they have their own testimonies that they'd love to share. And we look forward one day meeting with them so that I can share face to face with us their beautiful testimonies of your goodness in their life and so we commit this time to you now father and we thank you in jesus name amen <clears throat> i've got another <clears throat> another psalm that i'd like to to begin with uh, just just reading the psalm and maybe share a couple of thoughts. Um, Preserve me, O God, David says, for in you do I put my trust. Must have been an awesome time to live for David, especially who he was, where he was, the experiences he'd already been through, the, the responsibilities that he had, the challenges that he had around him. Um, he cries out to God, preserve me, O God, in you I put my trust. How nice to be able to say that. Isn't it great to be able to sit here this afternoon and, and, and look at what's going on around us in this world and saying, preserve us, O Lord. Preserve us, O God. In you do we put our trust. We don't know what 2021 is going to bring us. We didn't know what 2020 was going to bring. But God was good. God blessed us abundantly, amazingly, uh, especially here in Queensland, uh, we, you know, compared to so many places in Australia, around the world, we were blessed. And I think I know why. Because there is a place where, you know, in line with the sermons that I've preached over the last few times about God drawing nearer, you know, among, with, in, and being in Queensland and having this opportunity year after year, as we have over the last few years, to invite God to be extra specially close, not only Sabbaths, but new moons and feasts, etc. The, 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 there's a, I believe this has set up a sanctuary the Queensland has been blessed by. I honestly believe that. I don't believe it's an accident that Queensland has done so well. All praise goes to God. Amen. And if you believe in God, praise has to go to God. 
for, for what we have seen and witnessed and our experience. So preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. We will continue on this direction this year in, in both our daily living, but in our spiritual walk with, with our God. He will provide all of our needs. He'll continue to do that according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. O oh, my soul, you have said unto the Lord, you are my God. My goodness extends not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. They drink off their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. People that worship other gods, David's reflecting that um, they don't receive the benefits of um, worshipping the true God. The benefits of protection, the benefits of being preserved. They mean well in their hearts. They're, they're obviously um, meaning well and doing their best in their offerings, etc., etc., to their gods. But their gods are idols. Their gods, gods can't help them like the true God can. And so David's just reflecting on this. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. You are. Or thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. Do we believe that we've been instructed by God? Very, very personally. Very, very deliberately. Very, very closely over these last few years, to come to the place where we are today? I absolutely believe that. I know that for a certainty that the Lord has given us counsel through his word and through the spirit of prophecy. What a blessing it is to be a seven-day Adventist and have all of these gifts to us. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. That is a very popular, very common, very much a favorite verse of many people. Read that again. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. The, the Lord doesn't move away. We are the only ones that can change that relationship. The Lord is always at our right hand if we want him there. If we want to move, he is a gentleman. I will say, by all means, you may leave he will be saddened he will be grieved he'll breathe heavily he'll feel that in his heart but while we call on the lord he will be with us even at our right hand side and therefore we shall not be moved therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices my flesh also shall rest in hope what a privilege to be able to rest in hope while the world is struggling, frightfully struggling, without a hope. Except for the mighty V, the big V, the vaccine. Oh. That's the hope of the world. So, sorry, sorry. But, but we, 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 have the, we have the hope of all hopes. Blessed hope and glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. We have the daily hope of he being by our right hand side. We don't need to trust in in governments and, and other organizations to make our future clear and bright because we know what the true clear and bright future is don't we and it's the future where jesus is in control for you will not leave my soul in hell in the grave neither will you suffer your holy one to see corruption you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. When this world has passed away, when all the trials and troubles and tribulations, all those terrible things are gone, put behind us, we will have pleasures forevermore. The world is desperate for pleasure. Pleasure, leisure and treasure, I always say. They're, they're, always looking for pleasure, something to distract them from all these things that are not so nice in our world. 
But we look beyond this world. We look beyond the, the, the present to eternity in the presence of our Father, in the presence of His Son, together with all the holy angels and the redeemed. There shall be pleasures forevermore of, of a nature that eye has not seen nor ear heard. We can't imagine what it's going to be like. But we've just sung the song just before. I'd rather have Jesus than anything, including the, thing, the pleasures of this world. And so um, that continues that great hope. We know we shall see it. We know we shall be there. We know we shall gather by the river of that beautiful shore and that beautiful place because our Lord has promised in his word that he shall preserve us. And so... With those thoughts, I'd like to open up the floor to anybody who would like to share a little testimony, something of a blessing that the Lord can be a little one, can be a big one, just just to share your heart. Anybody like to come forward? Die, you're the first hand. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I'd just like to share a couple of, couple of um, amazing things that have happened recently. Back in October, the last day of October last year, there was a very big storm that hit mm. um, southeast Queensland. Mm. And we weren't at home. It was Sabbath afternoon. And we were visiting friends. And we were getting updates from our son in Perth, who has always getting the updates for Queensland. So he was saying, there's a storm coming. And we're saying... Okay, okay, because we're all watching the, new, we, the weather these days. Because do we have to run home? Do we have to do anything? Do we have to get the cars out of the hail or whatever? Anyway, while we were in, um, away from home, the storm came and hit our home. Uh, and there was a lot of damage and um, the caravan got written off and the uh, house and all the roofs and everything got damaged and so... But in that whole time, we were never once inconvenienced. We went home and we found all the roofs and the ice, big lumps of ice that big and big lumps of ice that big, um, lying all over the lawns, all up near us. It was just like snow everywhere. Um, and there was, there was ice all in our gutters and all in our garden and my poor plants got pummeled. But, and I didn't so much worry about the caravan because it was insured, but my plants weren't. And so I'm still trying to resurrect them. But um, so we were never once put out of uh, power or water. Wow. And we were never once out of um, somewhere sleep where we could sleep dry and clean and warm. Mm -hmm. So thank you, God. Uh, we're getting a new roof completely and the, car the caravan got written off and paid out and all that kind of stuff. So... Uh, we're just so blessed, just so blessed. Um, a few kilometres away in another suburb, 450 homes were rendered homeless, um, unlivable in, um, and cars were totaled and families had to go and live elsewhere if they had anywhere to go. Just dreadful, dreadful damage. So we are very blessed. The other, I mean, we have so many blessings, keep coming. They keep cold coming all the time. But another one that was very special yesterday, yesterday afternoon, so Paul and I have made a, um, an agreement that like the um, islanders in uh, Arawifi and Betty Karma, we're going to stop everything at 12 o'clock on Friday and get ready for Sabbath. Just, just going to cruise into Sabbath rather than rush. Okay, so and that's something we've been doing because the islanders do this. They stop everything at lunchtime and the rest of the afternoon is just getting ready for Sabbath. It's a beautiful experience. You don't have to rush, don't have to do anything. And uh, they're singing as they walk around. So anyway, we weren't singing this afternoon. Uh, we were loading pallet racking into the shed. And uh, I don't know if anybody understands what pallet racking is. But it's what they put all the big pallets on. Uh, stories high, three and four and five stories high with big forklifts and all that kind of stuff. So we're building some into our shed and um, Paul invited me very nicely if I'd like to get up on the first level and just f rearrange some things for him. And um, yes, I happened to step through a gap about that wide. 
And I just kept praying as I was falling over. I was praying, God, please don't let me snap my ankle. Please, Lord, I need my ankle. <laughs> it's been a swollen ankle for a few months now. But please, Lord, I need my ankle. It could have been really ugly. I'm lying here. I could fall down on the floor, which I'm about that high off, and be hanging by my ankle. But it didn't happen. So thank you, Father. He saved my ankle. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Wow, yeah, praise God. Praise God. Anybody else? Yes? It's Fiona. Dear sister, Fiona's got something to share. Yes. Sure, sure, it'll, sure it'll be exciting. It's always exciting. Sure. Set her up. Oh, thank you. Oh, you got something to... Yeah. Just a Thank you, you. You can hit the enter key. To oh, I can't okay. enter. Oh, sorry. Uh, over there. <laughs> Blessed Sabbath every afternoon, everybody this afternoon. Um, I've been wanting to give this little bit of a testimony for ages and ages, and um, it just didn't get to happen. And because there were some photos that I wanted to do with it, that it just didn't happen. And this morning I went right, quick, let's go and get the photos because I thought it wouldn't wouldn't work if I had to do that on the camera. So I quickly put them on the uh, PowerPoint. So I'm not very good with PowerPoints or anything like that. So it's really just, that's it. Um, but basically, um, I mean, I've given lots about my surgery, my mastectomy, February last year, but there was just a couple of days in hospital that I just wanted to um, talk about um, just how, you know, like you said, Father blessed. And um, I wanted to thank Yvonne before the surgery. She stayed with us in January last year and this was a book she gave us as, as she left and it's from her area and it's made from cork from that area. And it's got a bear on it because that's the symbol from around there. So um, that then became my book to write my journey in. And so, um, and if I go along here, that was a photo I took of Yvonne. She was just so, excited that she couldn't believe the fruit over here and the vegetables were so big. So um, we took that photo, she's like creating it like a little baby. So hello Yvonne, hopefully you'll see this at some stage or other. I think that was it. Um, and so this was just from um, the surgery, I went into hospital on the 20, uh, and probably this is because it's coming up to 12 months from my surgery, it has been sort of going through my mind a little bit. Um, and so the day of the surgery was the 24th of February um, and so there was a few notes I wrote and um, I really like flowers and roses thank you Craig for the roses I love the roses um, and as we got on the day there at the hospital um, we parked really close by and I wrote as walking underneath a large friend of frangipani tree a large pink flower on the ground that was recently dropped with no brown on it. So I put it in my purple shirt. Of course, I had to wear a purple shirt. Um, and I'd left it in my shirt and it had a lovely fragrance. And even later on when I had unpacked my clothes, it was still there. And so the fragrance still <coughs> stayed. And so I was very thankful just these little things that Father showed me all the way along. Um, uh, this was something the breast care nurse gave me. Uh, which was to put the drain in and everything and then they give you a little cushion to put underneath your arm and it just it, it, and the, the thing that really and you know to me there's big things God can do but it's when the little things that are really just personal just really shows you how much and when there's these lovely ladies that make them for the um, vasectomy ladies and when I looked in um, they were, it was made by the Lions Cub of Tempering Mountain and so that really brought to mind uh, Ron and Gay James because, you know, that was just like, oh, Tambourine Mountain and then made me think of um, Emma and Wayne and um, Blair and Caroline. So that was another little little personal thing because it had um, Paris things on it. It's got a little poodle on it to remind me of Lucky. Um, so it was just these really little personal things just the whole time that I was there in the, the hospital. Um, and then there was the results and the results went well but the thing is um, Bronwyn came to visit me on Wednesday night and brought me some flowers as did um, uh, 
Catherine from my work, um, my old work I used to work, she bought me some more flowers. And so I had all these beautiful flowers. If I go down, so there's two bunches. There's the roses that Catherine bought and the flowers that Bronwyn bought. And that was a photo I tried to take. Oh, there's the bag. Oh, right, go back. So that was the flowers I had and that was from Wednesday onwards. And then Jenny Timms rang me on the Friday and I was just talking to her and everything and she just mentioned, and I sent her a text back on the time, that she just, she'd just mentioned about Steps to Christ and about gathering the roses, the lilies and the pinks. And I sent her a text the next day, thank you for reminding me of that quote. I said, I love that story and I'd forgotten it till you mentioned it. And, and this was the little thing that God had showed me because I don't know if you can see it really well, but my friend Catherine bought me the roses and they were pink. And the bunch of flowers that Bronwyn bought had lilies in it, the white lilies down the bottom, and then there was the pinks, the pink carnations. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was, a, it was a hard time, it was a tough time. And I was just like, this was just something that really um, hit me. And so I, I wrote out the quote. So it steps to Christ, um, page 116, paragraph 3. Many walking along the path of life dwell upon their mistakes and failures and disappointments and their hearts are filled with grief and discouragement. While I was in Europe, a sister who had been doing this and who was in deep distress wrote to me, asking for some word of encouragement the night after I read her letter I dreamed that I was in a garden. And one who seemed to be the owner of the garden was conducting me through its paths. I was gathering the flowers and enjoying their fragrance when this sister, who had been walking by my side, had called my attention to some unsightly briars that were impeding her way. There she was, mourning and grieving. She was not walking in the pathway following the guide, but was walking among the briars and the thorns. Oh, she mourned, is it not a pity that this beautiful garden is spoiled with thorns? Then the guide said, <coughs> let the thorns alone, for they will only wound you. Gather the roses, the lilies and the pinks. Mm -hmm. And I have often enjoyed that story, and I have it underlined in my Steps to Christ and I had completely forgotten about it until Jenny rang me on that Friday and reminded of me. And then I looked straight across from my bed and there was the roses, the lilies and the pinks. And so I really Amen. saw it as a, a testimony from the Father as not to, to worry, not to, which, you know, I need to remind myself. And, you know, the Ten Commandments, he asks us to remember because we forget. And so he's reminding me and remembering me to not worry because just gather the lilies and the pinks. And so that was a real, real big thing for me, a testimony. And I had, was undecided about whether to go home on the Friday or the, or the weekend. And the doctor had left it up to me. And I'd said, Lord, I don't know. It was hot and, you know, it was a bit of trepidation to go home. And I said, Lord, just give me a sign if I should go home or not. And I had the worst sleep I've ever had in my entire life on that Friday night. I said, thank you, Lord. I woke up on Sabbath morning and said, that's my sign. I'm going home. Edward, come get me. <laughs> um, regardless of what's happening. But it was just gathering the lilies and the pinks and the roses. And it was just such a beautiful... And I've tried to do a little shot there. Tried to do selfies, Hannah. Um, so the roses, the pinks and the lilies. Just Amen. because it was such... Um, just a small thing, and because I'd completely forgotten, it wasn't until Jenny mentioned it, I was just like, wow, I really have to be reminded, thank you, Father, that even in all these terrible things and things that's happening to you personally, that he says to, to don't look at the thorns, but to look at the, to gather the lilies, the pinks and the roses. So if I can encourage you, um, A, to read Steps to Christ, um, and B, to gather the lilies, the pinks and the roses. Lovely. That was truly beautiful. That was really nice. Praise God. How thoughtful is our God, hey? And how he works through different channels to bless each one of us. It's just, yeah, he's good. All right. We've got a few, a few, a few things to read and some yeah. things to share. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yep. Oh, cool. Maybe you can work the top sides. <coughs> Ruben, Ruben shared with you the, uh, this new book that Jeff and Robin have printed for us. Consuming Fire, many people ask, well, if, if, if you don't believe God destroys, is Satan going to kill himself in the end? Well, this, this addresses that question from the Bible. What really happens to Satan in the end? It's a, very, it's a question that's often asked, so we have plenty of them here. 
nice attractive cover. Jonathan Otto uh, got his graphic designer to design the cover for us. So again, it's another interla international collaboration to bring this, uh, this book together. And, uh, and again, it was Dian in Bulgaria and Kevin in Maine that, uh, that put this together for us. So, uh, Cain, and, Cain and Conquest, many people ask, uh, all these genocides in the Old Testament, uh, you know, well, please explain. So, this, this, please explain. So, we're explaining about uh, Cain and Conquest about what's all this going on in the Old Testament and why did God seemingly command all of these deaths to take place in the Old Testament. So two very, very important booklets. They're Bible only. We've designed them for outreach purposes. So if you're going to take one, take two, take three, take four. Think of people that you could give this to. That would be uh, a real blessing. Uh, testimony here. Uh, last weekend when I turned up to Paul and Dyes, Paul bowls up to me with his phone and shows me a video of our dear brother Tony Milikic uh, coming off his motorcycle, running into a, someone had run a, a wire, a barbed wire across a, a trail, and uh, he got, he was very, very blessed, very, very blessed he didn't end up much worse, and as you were talking about your ankle die, mm -hmm. Tony was saying, I'm, I'm here with my ankle all iced. So uh, we're very, very thankful. I saw the video of Tony being flung off his bike. Uh, and life can change at any moment, can't it? Mm. Just, uh, so we're thankful, Tony, that you're okay. Oh, Liam, the same, yes. Got flung off his bike. Had an uh, impromptu interview with a signpost. Uh, <laughs> Concealed driveway. Huh? Concealed driveway. Concealed driveway <laughs> sign, was it? I didn't see it, but that's what I saw after. Uh, oh. <laughs> We're very thankful, Liam, that you're, you're okay. Uh, I'd just like to share uh, a number of things that are happening in different parts of the world. Um, there's so many stories, so many different things that are taking place. Uh, but you will... I'll, I'll bring this up on the screen. Actually, I'll go to... To Maranatha Media. Um, I just want to go to the books area. This is the. Uh, there we go. I don't know if you've all seen the new the new cover for Identity Wars. Mm. It's going to be the new Identity Wars. <laughs> Jeff and Robin are printing some more for us. For the outreach purposes, see, you can see all the flags, all the different countries where we've got the book uh, published. At the moment, we're having Identity Wars translated into Turkish. And there is a lady uh, who, she's Turkish, but she understands German as well as English. And you're trying to work, you're trying to work it out? Yeah, <laughs> It's a bit of an identity war, isn't there? It is. It's very, very... Uh, Shane Winfield put that together for us. Did a great job uh, on that. And uh, trying to reach out into the community. And uh, some people say they either like it or they don't like it. But uh, to young people, they seem to really like it. So that's what we're going with. We're going to test it out. Uh, anyway, this lady... Um, She's been, uh, she's part of the German group and they were, they were having a, a, a group study in Germany and Jutta sent me part of their presentation and she spoke it in English and, and they translated, Jutta translated it into German for them and she's been translating this book and she says, having been a, a, a Muslim, she says, this book is for my people. It just speaks so beautifully to the heart in a very simple way, in simple manner. She's so excited to get this book into Turkish uh, and to get that book there. She says, it's just so much changing my understanding of things. And so it was very beautiful, very moving to listen to that testimony uh, for the little book Identity Wars. The thing we need to remember, and this is one of the challenges, is that for those of us that are on this journey, yeah, I've read that. It's the danger, isn't it? It's like, well, I, I, I know this. Well, everyone out there doesn't. So this is life-changing material for people out in the community. 
and uh, we want to get these books. It's like changing in the church, Adrian. Yes. <laughs> we just don't necessarily know it yet. Yes, still got to reach more people. Uh, we are getting some quotes at the moment. Uh, the Portuguese edition of this, I'll take you to the Portuguese website. Uh, hopefully I can... Can I spell Portuguese? I can. Good. This, this is our Portuguese website. And uh, here we have... These are the books that we already have in Portuguese. Uh, and there's the Identity Wars. Uh, Pastor Ruggiero uh, translated... Uh, um, sorry, Nelson in America from Brazil. He translated this and then Ruggiero had it uh, prepared for printing in Brazil. And there are Portuguese-speaking people. This is a wonderful thing. I'm learning my geography. Did you know that there is Portuguese-speaking people in Angola? Did you know that? Do you know where Angola is? You go Western Cape of South Africa, and then there's Namibia, and then there's Angola on the on the western side of Africa. So we wear warm clothes. Yes, it's pretty warm there. So we're getting uh, Portuguese identity wars uh, printed in Angola, uh, as well as we've had some of these printed in South Africa to be sent to Mozambique. But there's uh, uh, Portuguese-speaking people there. So very, very excited about that. And we have uh, a wonderful father and daughter team in Portugal who are just translating their heads off, sending me heaps of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with them, uh, with, with everything that we're, we're doing in, in, uh, in the Portuguese. So this is one of the recent ones. Uh, that was translated into Portuguese, and it's going really, really well. Uh, Nelson, who lives in Arkansas, who speaks, uh, obviously, Portuguese, he is working on Return of Elijah in Portuguese, uh, which is a no small feat. And Carlos in Portugal, he is now translating Life Matters into Portuguese. So this, this, this language is exploding with, uh, uh, with many, many of our publications going into Portuguese and just wonderful Rogerio, Pastor Rogerio uh, he has just finished editing Agape in Portuguese absolutely loves it uh, what we write in here about Elijah uh, the closing scenes of when the fire comes down and he, just things that he had already believed himself but didn't have all the biblical support that we're providing so he's very keen for Agape to go all through Brazil so we're, we're looking forward to printing Three, four, five thousand of those uh, in Brazil, and he wants me to come to Brazil when I, um, Return of Elijah is completed, so that uh, he wants to share it with many of the leaders. The Father and Son movement in in Brazil is at least a hundred thousand people. Just, you know, this is not a small movement. So uh, they, they've had some challenges, of course, uh, and he feels that the book Return of Elijah will help consolidate a lot of the people with the things that are presented in that book. Yeah. So we're, we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, I, I don't know if you have seen uh, Father of Love uh, in Arabic. This is our, here's our Arabic website. So if you think I can speak Arabic, you're wrong. I'm just guessing where things are. So, we have several publications in Arabic now, uh, and very excited about this. Our Canadian, tra he's, he's in Canada, Amgad is in Canada, he's an excellent translator. Just finished translating Christ's Mission to the World in Arabic, he loved it, absolutely loved it. So, we're, we're excited to, uh, this is part of our granary, we're preparing seed for when the world really is hungry for truth, we'll have these materials ready for them. And I really wanted to go uh, into, into Arabic. So what have we got? We've got uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got 11 publications in Arabic, which is just tremendous. Oh, tremendous. Uh, and 
So just thought I'd share that with you. He is now working on As You Judge uh, in Arabic. Or also just, um, I'll go to, it's actual Maranatha Media, Russia. So you can see some of our publications there. This is Russia. Uh, and we, we have... Um, we have a number of translators. It's actually interesting that Amgad's in Canada who's translating Arabic. His wife is a professional Russian translator because she's from Ukraine and she does excellent work. She's doing uh, uh, some work for us as well. And we also have Aina in uh, uh, Kazakhstan who's translating a lot of stuff into Russian for us as well as we have Alex in the middle of Russia who's also, who also does translation for us. So, as you can see, we've got quite a lot of publications in Russian, and wow. uh, we're getting about one a month now coming out of, out of uh, in the Russian language. So, we're very, very excited about that. Uh, so, that's just maranathamedia-russia.com. And, of course, we've got, uh, we've got a new Serbian translator. So, As You Judge is being worked on in Serbian at the, at the present time. Uh, if I just... Just take you over there so we can have a bit of a look. Yes, Maranathamedia.rs. We actually have the country letters in Serbian. Mm -hmm. So again, we have quite. A, we do have returnable IG in Serbian. That was quite uh, well done. It's actually interesting that uh, some of the brothers there told me that someone had taken my book in Serbia in in Serbian had corrected what they thought were errors in the book and released it under my name. So I sold it under my name. <laughs> so so I, I appealed to them and I said, could you please take that down? <laughs> or at least take my name off it. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to change my heresies, they called them. So uh, anyway, we have uh, some interesting characters in Serbia. <laughs> so... so uh, and then you can see uh, Barney's book in Serbian. Yeah, Barney's book. Uh, yeah, from the boxer to the prince. So well, we were able to get that up on the website in Serbian, which is which is a real blessing. So these these books are are, are moving well. So just wanted to give you a bit of a feel, and of course we have several websites. We have we have probably thirty eight websites now. Uh, in, in, we're working in about 30 languages uh, and I'm really, really thankful to my son Michael for programming all of this for me. Mm. It's just been tremendous. And his partner Keely is starting to do some work for me in terms of database entry sort of stuff. She's really good with that, getting all the transcripts. And I will show you this. We're trying to get as many of the presentations um, as we can, as keep a catalogue of stuff that we've done over the last few years. So if you go to presentations and then you come down to presenters, I might try and move that up a bit. And let's say we'll go to say, just click on Colin. And if you come there, it's got, he's got 33 presentations, 19 articles and 11 downloads of his, of his presentations. So we, I'm trying to get uh, all the speakers that we've had at our camps over the last, since 2017, so that you can go and if you, if you remember, oh, I remember Colin did a presentation, you can come here and find it. And when it was presented, it'll all be there available. So as much of the stuff as possible over the last, since 2000, beginning of 2017, I'm going to try and get as many of the presentations on there as possible. So just making you aware of... Uh, this facility that we're, we're working on at the present time. And again, just coming back to the main website, I've just put on the front page here seven key series uh, on the front page for if so people want to start escaping the Pentagon of Lives, Theos is God, Good, Agape, 2020, Present Truth, Father of Love and Abomination, Anti Venom. And with all of these, I'm trying to make sure that uh, with these that they can download the video, they can listen to the audio, or they can download the transcript. So you can, all those things, all of those presentations, I want the transcripts. So we've got 
at least 10 people around the world who are working on transcripts at the present time because it makes it easier for translators to translate <coughs> these into other languages. Uh, the 2020 Present Truth series, which was the series that I did at the end of 2019 in Talking Rock, this series here. Uh, you see we've got the transcripts, all the transcripts are done in the audio downloads. Uh, just in my email box two, three weeks ago, Carlos in Portugal had completely translated these 11 presentations into Portuguese. Just bang. Just, there it is. Just, just trying to keep up with it all. With all these types of things. So just letting you know some of the things that are on the, on the website for, for you there. And uh, just some of the happenings around the world. I'll just finish off with one, one point. I had the opportunity to uh, have a two-hour conversation with a group in Poland and to follow this link through, I'd been, pr I'd been praying for a couple of years for this message to go into Poland and uh, Hania also had been praying and we'd been working and we got a gentleman in Sydney, an Adventist gentleman, Andrew, who translated a couple of books for us, Identity Wars and um, Agape. And we sent it to Poland. Uh, Nicholas, who is working in Sweden, uh, is married to Karina, who's a Polish young lady. And her father picked up, uh, was, we sent to her father Agape. And he is absolutely fallen in love with that book. He's just accepted it wholeheartedly and he looked for an editor, uh, a lady who has a background in journalism and she has just, she's so excited about the character of God through the book Agape. And they're nearly ready, they've, it's taken 12 months but they've nearly finished editing it. They're very excited about it. They want to print it and distribute it and then as soon as possible they want then to, uh, for us to do like a Zoom presentation into Poland so that we can present the principles of Agape. So that's something that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, so that's, uh, that's just some of the happenings amongst many of the happenings. Uh, just a little bit more of an update. Ben and Marie are back in Talking Rock and we are... Talking Rock is now becoming... Uh, a hub, it's being now developed into quite a youth hub. There's quite a lot of young people there now, and I will tell this story because it's fairly important. A wonderful young man by the name of Obadiah Wright, who is the son of uh, Laura and Wayne Wright. Uh, Laura is the sister of Hal Mayer. I don't know if you know, have heard of Hal Mayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and Obadiah has come to work at Talking Rock Sabbath Chapel. He's working in the Eden Point a Lifestyle Centre. And he has been reading the books. And he has quite a number of connections with quite a number of the father-son groups, Adventist father-son groups in America. And many people uh, say to him and have said to him, and as I quite often said, uh, these people that, that follow this, they all just follow, they just all follow one man and they just, everyone just says, just read his books, just read his books. And they all duped by his books. Uh, have you ever heard people say that? <laughs> so Obadiah's had the time and he sit down and he's reading the books and he said, I don't find any fault in these books. People need to read these books. Amen. So <laughs> just read the books. <laughs> and, and like we've always said, nothing's in concrete. If there's anything that's not right, bring it to our attention. We'll, we'll address it. We'll look at it. I'm just, we're just writing out the things that we're really excited about. And yes, we have written a lot of books. And there's quite a team of us now around the world. But I'm very thankful for Obadiah just sitting down, reading the book, saying, this is fantastic. This is great. It's wonderful. It's such a beautiful picture of God that's being presented. So uh, Obadiah, we've got Obadiah, Ben and Marie soon, Malcolm and Sabrina, We've got Andy and Garrett, and then soon Daniel Malisa will be there. So it's, Talking Rock's going to be quite a young people's hub for our movement. Uh, so maybe we will uh, expand our training school there when doors open again. Uh, and 
we're just praying that will open up. So I'm looking forward to great things to take place here at Talking Rock. So I'll hand it back to Gavin. Amen, brother. How good is that? <clears throat> I'm excited to be a part of part of this movement, part of the work. Um, having been privileged to have been invited. Um, <clears throat> many know my story in the aged care and that sort of fell through. Uh, boy, last year, end of April, last day of April, I wasn't allowed to go to work the next day if I didn't have a needle in my arm. And I said, oh, well, okay, bye. And uh, then the opportunity arose to, to start doing Bible work. And uh, not so doing that PowerPoint, but... Uh, that we used the old hymnal up on the PowerPoint. That took quite a while. But yeah, the Bible work. The idea, and I know this has <clears throat> been Adrian's desire, is to take the um, complexity, if I can use that word, yeah, definitely. the complexity of the source material and try and boil it down and simplify it and whatever. And those that know me, I'm Mr. Simple. Um, I, I, I can understand and get all the information, but I like it just on a nice little platter, nice and simple. And, and so um, the idea was to take, well, well yeah, find Bible study, uh, find people who want a Bible study and offer our materials. And so I, the, the first one, the first couple I started with was the Divine Pattern. <clears throat> I turned the original d Divine Pattern uh, of Life booklet into four studies and I, I didn't think to bring any this afternoon but uh, I've, I've just put it into a, a format that's relatively easy to present or at least for me because this is the galvanized version and and, and uh, also the identity wars now the identity wars uh, booklet <clears throat> I'm I've been going through chapter at a time each chapter turning into a Bible study, and when I say a Bible study, many of you will probably be thinking, "There's not enough Bible verses in each chapter to, to have a Bible study because it's usually um, question, Bible verse, question, Bible verse." That's sort of how we do Bible mm. studies as Adventists. Mm. <clears throat> I've still got the one that I did the other day with one of the one of the ladies. What I do is I've tried, and I'll present more on this up at the, up at the camp oh, when I'm doing like the methods and stuff that I use, but, but since we're sharing this afternoon, what I do is I, I read through each chapter and then I try and personalise it by um, introducing the study with a question that the person can answer about their life. What is important about family to you? What is important about this to you? What, what's a highlight that you've had with your family? What's a, just these kind of questions as an intro and then we move into the study. What this does, it opens up their mind, their heart. Um, they share as much as they want, which is fine. They don't have to share everything. But then through the, the power of the Holy Spirit, working on each individual Bible teacher's mind, you start to know a little bit more about that person. And so the outlines then become personalized to that person, for example. Um, one, the, the first lady that I did the Identity War series with, we, we're right up to, the next one will be number 12. So we've done 11 of these and and she was she's just astounded she she said to me gavin like our young people need need to know this stuff if only you could present this material to young people um should be presented to all people because it's just so beautiful to 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 understand who god is a correct understanding of who god is will give you a correct understanding of who you are and, and I'm stealing notes from my sermon that I'm going to speak up at camp. But the other thing is, so it's not only just the two things, understanding their identity and understanding God's identity, but here's one for us. It's also for them to understand Gavin. Did you ever think about that in a Bible study? To actually build a bridge from your heart to their heart and get them to know our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities, our strengths, 
that we're all in this together. It's a journey when we're all reaching out to God and we're all just wanting to know more about our Father. And so that's what the Identity War series has become to me. It's just a bridge to other people's hearts whereby they will know themselves, their God, and their instructor, who is exactly the same as them, just on a journey to heaven and hoping to, you know, by God's grace, <clears throat> gather together on that beautiful shore one day. And so, yeah, it's just been wonderful. Another lady, um, I did the divine pattern with her first. Um, and she was amazed. She was so amazed that she said to me, Gavin, can you print me your notes in my language? <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. But that's okay, because her language is my wife's language. So, no worries. So we, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat again. So that's what we did. We went to Google Translate and we just whacked all the notes in and it spits it back out. We um, put it into a Word document. Then the Islata and I sit down side by side and we just go through and try and weed out the mistakes and the grammar and the words and whatever and, and, it's, and it's really great. So we do that and then so we rock up to the studies and here's one copy for you in your language. The reason she wants them, she says, this stuff is brilliant. She says, I want to teach this. Hallelujah. And she is. In her local Bible study group, she is already sharing this information. And she also has an afternoon prayer group via the telephone that she's sharing this overseas to not just a group of people in a house, but a group of people in different areas of Europe that somehow, I don't know the technology, I'm not technologically minded, but somehow they're all on this program, all on this group of, of prayer, and she's sharing what she's learning with them as well. And she says they're really loving it. She, and it's just interesting. Not everyone loves it, though. She says, because the people here don't have exactly the same warmth to the material. So, and that's the way that it is. You, you know, it, it, it's not going to suit everybody. But um, the, the point I'd like to make is that Adrian's produced the material that the Lord gave to him with the assistance of others, as we've seen. Others are working together with him to bring the material together. Us elders, when we have our meetings with Adrian, we talk about things, we share things, we all have input. Adrian is the writer that just is compiling it all. <clears throat> then he has given it to, for example, me. It can be you. It can be any one of us. You can take the materials, make your own kind of a little Bible study that suits the way you like to present it. Um, then you present it to someone else. And then they can take it and run with it in their way, with their friends. And this is the way the gospel took off in the beginning, wasn't it? Can we get your study notes and make them available for us? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's no problem. And so you, you would do that. Okay, Adrian said, can I make these available for other people? Absolutely. I mean, we can, I can give them to you or however you do it. Mm. And <clears throat> people could look at them and go, well, that doesn't make sense. Or well, that doesn't relate to me. Put your own info in. Make it yours. Make it your own personal. Because um, Adrian shares <clears throat> in his books stories about your mum and her accident. Other stories about his family. I sit there and I go, oh yeah, that, that reminds me of this in my family. And so I'll share my story. So mm -hmm. some of it won't make 100% sense because it's just my notes. It's my, what do they call them, little, um, little triggers. It just triggers me. Cheat, cheat, cheat sheet. sheet. <laughs> cheat sheet, yeah. It's my little cheat sheet. Um, but... We've had a lot of tears, a lot of tears, as people are opening up and discovering God's love. Mm. One lady, one of the ladies said to me, this is gold. She said, I've been an Adventist 26 years and no one has taught the Bible like this before. No one. And, and this is a strong lady, very strong lady. Just, yeah, sharing tears because she now understands who she is. Amen. in the context of her Heavenly Father and the Divine Pattern. So, yeah, that's just um, sort of what I'm doing. And when I, first <clears throat> when I first started, it was a couple of studies a week, and then it was three, and slowly built up. And, and then last week, <clears throat> I got up to six studies. I was doing six studies a week. And then I got a dear brother just sitting there. We went for a drive last week. We were in the car for an hour or so, and in, in the conversation and some of the things we were talking about, it was like... Oh, how do we answer this? Well, pop around, we'll have a chat about it. And so we've started studying and 
we're going to have a good time together and just um, Thursday, uh, would have been Wednesday night, Thursday, yeah, I, um, I got a text from one of the ladies that I'm doing this identity series with and she says, I was talking to a lady and da 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 da, da and I, I told her that she'd probably be interested to have some studies with you because she's got some questions that no one's been able to answer and through the blessings that God has been pouring out on our group for such a long time um, I, I, I think we can help her you know and, and so I finally I rang her to uh, just touch base with her the other night and she's got some questions that she said no one's been able to help her with about the character of God and I said I think we're going to have fun together and so next Wednesday we're going to mm. begin studying with this lady Amen. bless her heart um, so pray, pray for me as I continue doing this work. It's a little bit overwhelming, eight studies a week, because out of the eight studies, um, I've got two ladies now on this. One's on lesson five and one's on lesson 12, so I don't have to prepare that again. But other than that, all the studies are different. Different, different books, different topics, different whatever. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit overwhelming to do that, but you know, God's good. He, uh, he, he blesses me every time we open the Bible and open uh, the notes, and that, that, that's fantastic. So, uh, yeah, just continue praying for me, for Adrian, for all the elders and the, and the movement around the world, the translators, everybody, because uh, it's, it's a team effort, multi-channels, leading in many different directions, in many different languages, to bless many different nations around the world, and it's expanding all the time, which is just beautiful. So with some of your studies, is it, if someone wanted to come and join you and just sit in and listen, could they do that? Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, um, I've already had an offer of, of someone, yeah. I'll just have to touch base, obviously, yeah. with the individuals because they do open up quite deeply because, you know, they know me now. Um, but, yeah, if, if they're comfortable to have somebody else come along, yeah. um, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd Wonderful. be good, really good. All right. Well, I think we've had a wonderful time. Thank you for sharing uh, your little stories of God's blessing and protection and his foresight and everything from the flowers, etc., etc. It's been a wonderful afternoon together. Exciting to hear what's going on around the world. And it's nice to be a part of what's happening Amen. locally. Amen. It's nice to be able to get together every fortnight and, and share just how good God is because he truly is. Good with a capital G double O D. Amen. All right. Have you mentioned about next week? Next week, next week. Oh, um, week week five. Yes, next week is a, uh, and it's going to be live streamed. Yep. Yes. Okay. Next week we're going to be live streaming from Widgee. Uh and so yeah, everything will be as normal, other than the uh, place where we're streaming from. Sorry. 10, 10 o'clock start, normal start, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 10, 10 o'clock. Okay, it's, it's just a day program. It's not an anything else yeah. program. It's just just the day, normal day. So anybody sharing that's uh, local... Sharing a meal like we do here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so everybody... I don't have any details on that. But yeah. I, but I imagine... Everybody bring your food up for the day and we we'll just share it like normal. And BYO share? Yeah. <laughs> BYO and sit around together, you know, if it's... It's too complicated to, like, however, I don't know, I'm not yeah. one of the ladies who organises this stuff, but generally bring a plate, bring something for your family and a little bit extra and everybody just share together and uh, anything else. I think that's it. That's basically it. From here. Um, email any um, prayer requests or any um, testimony that you want to do or read them out in the afternoon program. Okay, okay, that's a good idea. Uh, if anybody has something that they would like shared, from, from up the front here, overseas, wherever you may be. S- either a, a text, or even if you wanted to type something out, mm-hmm. sent through a little Word document or whatever, just with a little testimony, a blessing, then we can read them out and, and let the world know how God is blessing you. Amen. Thanks, Ed. Great idea. Yes. Okay, well, how about we <coughs> close with a word of prayer? Our gracious Father in heaven, we just thank you that we can call on you any time, day or night, whatever our needs are, whatever our concerns are, 
and also with our praises and thanksgiving for your goodness lord we just thank you that you're always there always willing and always able to supply all of our needs we just thank you for jesus we sang earlier we'd rather have jesus than anything and this is becoming more and more real every day father we thank you that if we have your son we have life we just thank you for that promise thank you you so loved the world that you gave us your only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life <coughs> father i pray a blessing upon all those that have participated this afternoon either from up the front or listening or around the world listening father each family we pray that your spirit will dwell in their families that you will strengthen their families strengthen their relationships with each other as they are strengthened in their relationship with you may your healing power be present everywhere may people look on to, to, uh, at this movement and see just such a peace such a love such a joy such a non-intimidating character coming from our group that they are impressed by your spirit to hear your word and that they might join us father i know this is your desire and this is our prayer in jesus name amen, amen. Okay, Wednesday night is streamed or all closed? No, it's not a, okay, it's a non-streaming non on Wednesday night, so the next one will be next Sabbath from Wedgie. God bless all. Wonderful world.